Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. For over two weeks, Canadians across the country have taken to the streets, protesting racial injustice and systemic racism. When asked if systemic racism existed within the RCMP, here's what Commissioner Brenda Lucky had to say. I've been struggling with the definition of systemic racism, and I, when I think of unconscious bias, there is unconscious bias in the RCMP most definitely. And there is, um, you know, we live in a society where the inequities persist and police are part of that society. And so, yes, we have a responsibility to promote that inclusion and, and make sure we don't have that racism. Systemic racism is an issue right across the country in all our institutions, including in all our police forces, including in the RCMP. That's what systemic racism is. So as much as we admire and support the RCMP, we know we need to do better. The Prime Minister, as you could see in that clip, had a different response when it came to systemic racism. Joining me now to discuss systemic racism and what needs to be done to move this country forward, we have Ralston King, who is an Ottawa City Councillor. He's responsible for the new racism and ethno-cultural relations portfolio here in the city. And Cindy Blackstock, who is Executive Director of the First Nations Child and Family Caring Centre and a very well-known advocate for Indigenous children in this country. Thank you both for joining us. We really appreciate it. You know, there are some very tough conversations that Canadians need to have about our society and how things function. I want to start with a question that we hear a lot from viewers. And to get your perspectives on this, what does systemic racism mean to you? Cindy? Well, what systemic racism means to me is when treating people differently because of a particular trait becomes normalized in society and in some ways even made benevolent. We think about residential schools, the removal of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit children from their families because the assumption was it was better for the kids because these parents could take care of them. And even now, we have the federal government who at the same time, while they're admonishing systemic racism in police forces and other institutions, are actually perpetrating racial discrimination against 165,000 children. That's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of court order. And as recently as September of 2019, they were found that that discrimination was resulting in unnecessary family separations and the deaths of some children. So they can stand there and say that they're against it while they perpetrate it at the same time. That's the challenge, is we need to get them to embrace the fact that they themselves are doing the racial, racial discrimination in ways that harm people. And they themselves have to embrace this opportunity for change. Ralston, how do you see systemic racism expressing itself in Canada? Well, it's definitely when people are inhibited from having a fair access to uh, public services uh, from their government. And so at the city of Ottawa, uh, what we're doing is looking at the establishment of an anti-racism secretariat to ensure a quality of opportunities and a quality of outcomes uh, for people who over uh, a long period of time have not uh, been treated fairly uh, by their government in areas of housing, in areas of, of uh, other social services, uh, it's really important that when people deal with their governments uh, that they get equal treatment and that they have uh, a quality of opportunity and a quality of outcomes. And we don't see that uh, with uh, racialized uh, people, black people, indigenous people, and different uh, religious groups uh, in, in areas uh, such as housing or economic development or, uh, or employment. Uh, so that's what we're seeking to do at the city and in order to do that, we need real resources, and we need real resources uh, from uh, senior levels of government. Cindy, when it comes to resources, you have taken the government to court over the lack of resources they've provided to Indigenous children. What do you think is the biggest barrier facing Indigenous people right now in Canada, and what needs to be done about it? I think there's two big barriers. One is the inequality in public services. And let's face it, we've seen the money available since COVID. It really says to me, it was always possible for the government to treat First Nations children in equitable ways, and they chose not to. So it's that inequity. 
And then on top of that is this uh, lack of respect for the self-determination, the ability of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples to make decisions for themselves that are in their own best interests. We need to get rid of things like the archaic Indian Act in Canada. You want to talk about systemic racism, well, it's baked right into Canadian law there. Those things need to change. Ralston, I know one of the big files that you work on is policing reform, and we've been talking about this a lot in recent days in Canada. Uh, some say we'll put body cameras on officers. Others say that catches a couple of acts. It's not the long-term solution. What do you think needs to change in Canadian policing? I think what we need to do is have a, a really comprehensive view of where we're placing dollars. Um, I know that there is a, this... Um, um, you know, campaign around uh, defunding the police. Uh, in practical terms in Ontario, uh, the way we are structurally, it's very different than the United States. So uh, money cannot simply be removed uh, from the police service in, in an easy way. Uh, but what uh, most police services would tell you, including uh, I think the senior uh, leadership at uh, the Ottawa Police Service, is that we do need investments, greater investments in communities, especially uh, communities that are becoming more vulnerable and are becoming more marginal. And so uh, we need investments in mental health uh, supports and in youth programming uh, that is going to create uh, productive opportunities uh, for uh, youth within our cities. And so it's going to be necessary for us to uh, really seek uh, greater injections of, of dollars there into this type of, of programming. And we need to do that in conjunction uh, with uh, our police service and in conjunction with the public. Uh, so, so I'm going to uh, release a, a letter in the near future uh, that follows up on a uh, gun violence motion that I, that I moved at uh, City Council last year um, to really examine ways that we can make meaningful uh, community investments uh, to ensure that uh, across the board, uh, people uh, who are increasingly becoming marginal in, in our society have opportunities to, to really thrive. And uh, the key for us should be improving the quality of life of people and ensuring that our youth do not get wrapped up unnecessarily uh, with the criminal justice system. Cindy, I think a lot of Canadians have been very disturbed by the things that they've heard and seen and learned. Their perspectives are changing, and we see that in the polling of Canadians. People at home are wondering, what can I do to help? What is your advice to them? Well, the good news is we have a lot of solutions. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action, the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls calls to justice. And what everyday Canadians can do is actually write to the Prime Minister and say, now is not the time to postpone the plan to respond to the murder of missing Indigenous women and girls inquiry. It's the time to enact those recommendations. So we know better. The government knows better. So let's do better for these children, for their families, and for the communities writ large. These are solutions that we don't have to create. They're opportunities to really not only uplift First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, but other persons across the country too. And in doing so, we bring ourselves closer to that human um, benevolence, that sense of uh, human spirit that I think really bonds us together, regardless of our distinct differences. Cindy and Ralston, that's all the time we have. But thank you both so much for joining us and sharing your knowledge and your perspectives. We'll be in touch with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today. For the West Block, I'm Mercedes Stevenson.